Hello everyone, this is MMA Interesting Prospects Podcast. Today our guest is Ethan Polly, who will fight on Lights Out Championship 17 against uh, Greg Sizemore. Uh, hello Ethan, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, and yourself? Uh, I'm good, thanks. And uh, Ethan, you will be fighting probably the, the biggest uh, challenge of your career because of the experience of, of your opponent. So if you can tell me, uh, did you have any chance to, to watch any, any, of, any of his fights? Uh, yeah, so this will actually be an interesting fight for me because he's probably the one I'm most familiar with out of anybody I've ever fought. Um, like about like three years ago, I actually went to his gym um, a handful of times during one of his camps and helped him prepare for a fight um, with another guy that went to my gym. His name is Marco. So he's probably the I'm most familiar with him out of anybody I've ever fought. I don't think I really have known anybody else that I've fought other than like hearing their names or, you know, kind of seeing them at events. But uh, I will be the most familiar with him. And do you think that uh, his experience can be a, a factor in this fight? That that maybe maybe because of that that he uh, have a lot of years in the in the in the sport, he can maybe be a threat for you. Uh yes, I do absolutely, and that's kind of what we're hoping for. Um, like you said, this is uh, he's the biggest step up in competition, um, record and experience wise, and that was our whole plan here. Um, you know, kind of move on to the, you know, the next stone, so to speak, as we kind of keep climbing up. So I definitely think his, uh, his, um, you know, fight experience is going to be uh, a big factor in everything. So really want to test my mettle with this one, if that makes sense. And this will be a middleweight fight, right? Uh, yeah, this will be a middleweight. Um, I'm typically welterweight 170. Um, I just fought like five weeks ago and I didn't really want to cut weight to 170 again. It's tough not fun uh that's honestly the one thing they don't tell you about fighting is uh uh cutting weight is the hardest part fighting is easy next to cutting weight they uh i, I forgot who it was but it was a ufc fighter um they said they uh, they don't pay you to fight they pay you to come in on weight so it's the, it, it it is probably the only job uh, that that yep. uh, that can do it <laughs> and uh you are right now an undefeated prospect. You have a free submission on your pro record. So, mm -hmm. do you see uh, a, a, like another submission in this fight, or would you, in the perfect scenario, would, would you prefer to to win this fight by a knockout? Uh yeah. I mean, perfect world, KO TKO. I mean, it's way cooler. Makes for a cooler, flashier video. You know, get your name out there a lot easier. Um, I like to describe myself as an opportunist. Um, I don't go for submissions. Like I'm not sitting there hunting them. If, um, you know, if I happen to find myself in a situation where I can go for a submission where it's a high percentage, then I'm going for it. But other than that, I just kind of keep up with the, uh, I just kind of keep up with the pace of the fight and just kind of move with everything as it goes on. Um, I don't really, I guess, go for anything specifically, just it's kind of worked out that way. You know, a couple of triangle and then two rear nakeds. And because it will be a middleweight fight, but but you also also have a I think that few catchway bouts, right? Because of some cancellation, you got this one one seventy five one one ninety. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I did a one. I did like one ninety. I think the guy was like one ninety three, but we just called it. We did a one ninety catch weight because um, he filled in on like four days notice for me. Uh, back in May, so I did that. My only actual official middleweight fight I did in Ohio as an amateur because they don't do they do same day weigh-ins, so there's no way I could have done 170 and still fought. That would have been awful. But uh, yeah, so that was the only time I've ever actually officially done middleweight was all the way back then. And also, you had, uh, uh, I think that that overall great amateur career because uh, you uh, you were uh, seven one and one uh, fighting against really really uh, high level of competition. Uh, and uh, did you know at th this point uh, when you won your last fight as the amateur that this would be a perfect uh, perfect moment to go pro? Oh uh, no, not really. I was kind of just um, I just kind of feel it out as I go. Um, specifically for Michigan, you need five wins, I believe, as an amateur in order to go pro in the state. So at the very least, I'd have five wins. 
Um, and I had my last two bouts were both for regional amateur titles. Um, you know, I took those. And then, like you said, after the last one, it was my ninth amateur fight over like two years. Um, and I was seven one one. I had two regional titles. It kind of just felt like, you know, might as well just, you know, go pro at this point, start, start making some money, start fighting some, you know, higher level competition and see how far I can go. And I think that uh, after this bout, you definitely will get a, uh, even even ma ma much better uh, opponent because uh, the the Greg Sizemore is of course experienced fighter, but but probably when you will win this fight or finish him, uh, your next opponent will be like uh, maybe another undefeated prospect or maybe like more experienced but but even better uh, fighter th th than he is. Uh yeah, that's pretty much the goal here. Um. I don't know if you've ever really heard of him, but we kind of just, uh, I kind of follow him the same, you know, kind of path that my coach has laid out for um, my teammate, Austin. He just kept on fighting higher and higher level of ranked opponents, um, you know, or if like there was something specific that he like, you know, he lacked in or something we're like, all right, we want this guy because he does, you know, X, Y, and Z really well. Um, and then he just kept on smashing people, obviously. Um, so I don't really think that mattered all that much to him. But that's kind of, you know, my goal here is I want to just keep testing myself and just keep putting, you know, higher, better level people in front of me and just keep taking them out. And after this fight, when would you like to, to be in the cage again? Of course, we don't know what's going to happen in the fight, but but when you are thinking about your like near future. Um, I would like to get at least one more in before the year is over. Um, that's kind of what I'm hoping for here. Um, I had a cancellation in October of 23. And then in the beginning of this year, I had a guy a no show um, in January. So I couldn't get anything going after that. I took my first fight of 2024 in May. And then I had another fight in August and I'm doing this fight in September. I would love to have at least one more before the year is done. Um, make it four fights in the year. That would be that would be pretty nice. And a few years ago, when you started, uh, when you started uh, your MMA journey, did you have any background in any other of of combat sports? Uh no, none at all, really. I wrestled for like a week in high school. That was that was really about it. Um, I mean, I played sports. I was active, like growing up, but nothing, nothing like martial arts related. I don't. I think my dad dragged me to um, like a boxing gym when I was like. 13 or you know a karate and then like a karate dojo and i just we you know we never came back obviously um but basically kind of how i started was my friend um he wrestled one of my good friends he wrestled um all throughout high school and once he graduated um he just randomly said hey i'm gonna go to this brazilian jiu-jitsu gym like you should come check it out with me and i was like i have no idea what that is but let's let's run it so uh i went with him and then you know that was ooh, like nine years ago now. So it's an interesting thing because usually the the, the like uh, young fighters have a like wrestling experience, especially a wrestling experience, and of course it's a great base for for MMA. So it's a, a kind of crazy that that you didn't have it and you have the the great results that that you have right now. Yeah, no, um, I'm with you on that. I just kind of went head first really i remember my first boxing coach he he looked me dead in the eye kind of laughed almost like snickered to himself he went son you have two left feet and i was awful terrible i had no rhythm i had no balance i had nothing i just had the same thing i have today honestly which is why i tell everybody um i'm never going to be the fastest guy never going to be the strongest guy never going to be the biggest guy i'm never going to be the most technical guy but i have two things going for me i got grit and i got a can-do attitude so i'll tell you what that's what we, that's how we win fights. So probably it's like from your perspective, really cool that the progress that you made for 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 the, the, the this many years from the guy that that was not good at at one thing, and to, right now you are a top middleweight prospect. Mm -hmm. Welterweight uh, and middleweight, of course, a few weight classes, let's say. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, it's kind of funny. Tapology actually ranks me way higher as middleweight, which I always find hilarious because I have like one official middleweight bout.
Uh, and if you can tell me about the the gym that that you are training in, about about the, the your sparring partners and 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 coaches that that you have there. Okay, yeah, this is an easy one. So I train at Warrior Way Martial Arts um, in Wald Lake, um, kind of off of Commerce. Um, I think we have a great gym, honestly. I mentioned him already a little bit before, but Austin, Austin Bashy, he was just on Dana White's Contender Series um, a couple weeks ago. He got a UFC contract. He fights at 145. Uh, that guy's a different breed. He's a different animal. He's definitely the hardest, the hardest round in anything at the gym, the hardest sparring round, the hardest grappling round, you know, just gi, jiu-jitsu, no gi, MMA rounds, wall rounds, definitely the toughest guy. And he's honestly like, probably like the you know the corner of our the cornerstone i guess of like our gym he really keeps everybody you know focused and what have you he's uh you know i think he's like four four and a half years younger than i am but he's an inspiration to me which i always find so interesting um but he is an absolute beast and i think that's like the you know he's like the backbone of the of the team he kind of keeps everyone in line and then obviously we have, you know, legendary coaches. We have, um, you know, Brandon McDaniel. He's my head coach. He's grappling wizard. I would call him. He's been doing it for a million years. He has, he has black belt in 09 and he never stops improving. He never stops watching, um, you know, tapes, footage. And I'm, I'm talking like anything. He watches like MMA fights. He watches jujitsu matches, no gi gi. He watches wrestling just to get, you know, his knowledge, you know, that he can pass on to us, you know, even greater than he already has now, which is insane because uh, <clears throat> everything that we do in the training room and we do it relentlessly, I go in on a Saturday night and I watch, you know, the UFC, you know, I'm watching Bilal Muhammad and Leon Edwards, for example, and every single thing like Bilal is doing on the ground and on the wall is the exact same sequences that we train every day at Warrior Way. And that's all thanks to Brandon putting it all together. And then not to mention, um, we have Métis. Um, you know, he's world-class Muay Thai um, instructor, you know, former Lumpini grand champion from Thailand in the golden era of Muay Thai. Uh, he is an absolute beast um, at everything, really, anything striking related, even MMA striking. It's, you know, a little bit different than just straight up, you know, Muay Thai, he, you know, alters it and he adapts to like how we fight since I would say we're a little bit more of a grappling heavy gym. Um, and he, you know, he adapts to everything. And you know, I love having all those guys in my corners. Those are those are probably the three biggest inspirations and, um, you know, mentors, I would say. Um, at the gym as far as everyone else goes. And then we have a ton of young guys, ton of hungry guys who are just itching at this point to get into the cage. And you you mentioned uh, Austin uh, Bashi uh, like a few minutes late, uh, earlier, and actually he is, in my opinion, really one of the the best prospects on the scene because uh, taking con into consideration uh, that that he's just uh, like 22 or 23 and being uh, f 13 and now beating uh, guys on the UFC level, it's kind of kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for him, I know I mentioned this earlier when I talked about it, as an amateur for me. Um, like I said, in Michigan, you need like five wins to go pro. Well, he just couldn't get fights as an amateur. Like nobody would take it. So they had like call. They had to write a letter to the commission to like ask for permission for him to go pro at like 19 years old. So he goes pro. And then, you know, like like you said, he's, you know, 14 to no now after just beating uh, Ramos on the contender series. So it's crazy. Or 13 to no. I always forget because it's so many. And also before you mentioned the the weight cut that that it's definitely not the funny part of, of MMA, but if you can tell me what in your opinion is the best part of of this game uh, of MMA, um, the best part honestly is training. Um, I know Sean Strickland said it a couple times. Um, you know, on interviews like after he won the belt that he fights as a means to continue training and uh you know i kind of really think that's true like i love fighting it's awesome but i love being in the gym you know every day several hours with these same you know goofy ass idiots that i'm around all the time um it's just lively so that's honestly my favorite part is just getting in there every day training you know getting better seeing everyone's improvements 
Um, you know, and then just like this, you know, it's like the small things over time, you know, maybe you work on like a specific move, um, you know, I set like a striking setup or even like, uh, like a sequence on the ground. And then you, you know, you kind of see it, you know, blossom over, you know, months or, or weeks to months. And then now it's like, you know, something that people are asking you to help them with or something like that. I really like that part. I like just the growth. I like the journey. I like the climb. And because right now you are just a few days away from your fight, but when you are outside of training camp, do you also the train every day? Do do you want yep. to? Yes, yes, right. Uh yeah. Um, I try to take time off, but uh, it's not like I do a ton of other things. Um, in my life, I've made a lot of sacrifices to be where I am. So there's not a ton of other things that I really like doing other than training that I would rather be you know, spending my time. So I'll try to take a week off after a fight and eat as much food as I can and see as many people as I can. But then, you know, after like two or three days, I'm, you know, I feel like uh, some sort of addict. I'm like scratching my neck. Like, when are we going to go back training? And also that the like eating part is uh, qu quite important, I believe, for, for fighters because the weight cut is, is such a tough thing to do. So so after the fight, they they just like to eat. Oh yeah, my uh, my favorite. We went as a team. Um, not this last one, but the fight I had before in May. Um, I love Korean barbecue, so we all went out there and we got some Korean barbecue. And the place we go to is awesome. It's like all you can eat for two hours. I don't know how they make money. I'm sure other people aren't bottomless eaters like we are, but we we cleaned them out. We they did not make money on us. That is for sure. And every time I go in there, that's my goal. And my goal is they will lose money on me giving me all I can eat for two hours. And uh, about like about your goals in fighting, uh, do you consider a UFC the the like main ultimate goal for you? That in few few let's say years you would like to to be there fighting at top level contenders, or would you be also interested in taking uh, fights like on the Bellator PFL, maybe maybe one? Um. Yeah. Obviously, UFC is the ultimate goal. That would be probably more ideal for me in a lot of ways. Um. One would be really cool. I like. I like a lot of things in one. I think their events have more energy to them. A lot of their walkouts, you know, they still have that, you know, that more Eastern, you know, side that form that like pride, you know, feel to it. They'll have like the explosions and the fireworks, you know, when guys walk out. Um. And then they'll, you know, the, the fighters kind of get into it a little bit more. I like that energy to it. I think it's a little bit more fun. There's a little bit more, you know, showmanship to it. Sometimes the UFC events can be a little dry. You know, you've seen one, you've seen them all, you know, dead straight walk out. You get to the cage, which is awesome. You know, don't get me wrong. But sometimes watching those one cards, it's really cool seeing that energy. And it would be pretty sweet to fight in like Singapore or Thailand or like Korea or Tokyo, that'd be really cool. Um, it wouldn't be awesome to do it all the time. Obviously, living in the United States, that would be tough to do frequently, which is the UFC, I think, would be a lot easier going to like Vegas is significantly easier for me. But um, one of those two would be pretty cool. But I think the UFC would just make more sense with everything else. That way, I wouldn't have to drag my coach to South Korea for two weeks. And do you have a fighter fr from the UFC that you would like to to face? Um, honestly, anybody. Um, I plan on just kind of mostly sticking around 170. I mean, depending on you know how things go in the near future. But if we're talking 170 right now, um, I think it would be cool to fight almost anybody. I forgot what his name was. Um, a Brazilian fella. He just fought the leech and knocked him out in the first round. Um, that was, I think his Bratas, I think that's how you say his name. Not hundred percent, but he was real cool. I thought that, I thought that guy was nasty. I think that would be sweet. Yes. He's definitely a like a vicious guy to fight. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome watching him fight. I got, you know, I got like goosebumps. And uh, honestly, like any, but any of the, any of the 170 guys, um, I could, I, I feel like even now I could have done what Bilal did to Leon, you know, don't tell him. But uh, <laughs> um, honestly, really anybody, um, 
I don't have like a bone to pick with anybody or I don't really have a dislike of anybody. I don't really feel that way about fighting. To me, it's more of a sport than it is like, I don't like you. I'm going to punch you in the face. Now, if that does happen, you know, so be it. Um, but I, I still see it more as, uh, you know, me in there. You're kind of the secondary thing. I'm mostly just, you know, expressing my talents and my will and whatever my opponent does is irrelevant to me. And overall, MMA is quite a crazy sport because you you can be on the regional scene for many years and uh, you you don't get the UFC call, but but sometimes the, the things turn out turn out uh, quite crazy. And do you think that it's possible for for you to get a UFC shot next year? Because right now you are three and zero. You there is a big chance that you will be soon four and zero. So next year, do you see a kind of possibility? Uh, honestly, I I'm not sure how any of the scheduling works uh i don't pay attention to any of that um going the contender series would be awesome i would not really want to do the ultimate fighter i don't see why people like doing it currently i don't think doing a reality tv show fighting like two to three times in like six or eight weeks is the best uh you know way to put your entire work you know you know potentially even like 10 years of your life on the line i don't think that's a great idea but i would love to do the contender series Um, and if it shakes out, I would be 100% down to do it tomorrow if they called me. And Ultimate Fighter was a really cool, cool concept like 15 years ago because yeah. there was uh, no social media. And, and of course, the, 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 the people want to be on TV. And the, the, at that time, it was a really good idea. But right now, when the fighters can, uh, let's say, brand yourself on social media, it's, it's probably not the best... Um, It, it's okay, but it's better ways to, to get to the UFC, probably. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely think um, the Contender Series is far and above better. I mean, when you break it down, it just doesn't, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so, obviously, multiple people can get contracts on the Ultimate Fighter, but the whole point is, like, the winner gets the contract. So, you could fight twice and then lose in the semifinal, you know, or in the final round. And not get a contract. You just spent six or eight weeks. You fought two, two guys. You fought three guys. One, two, lost one, and you get nothing to show for it, essentially. Or you could do a contender series fight, and you know, KO the guy in the first round, and then Dana gets excited and just hands you that UFC contract. Boom, like on the spot. I definitely think that's just a better route to go. I mean, even just a straight up contract would be cool, but I don't think they really do that necessarily as much anymore now that they have the contender series or the Dana looking for a fight outside of the United States. Yes, yes. Right now it's quite a rare thing. It's uh, maybe short notice uh, sometimes will happen, but but it's it's really hard to to just to be picked uh, on the uh, like uh, when you want some fight. It's uh, qu quite mm -hmm. rare thing right now. Yeah, yeah, you got to be like an Alex Pereira, like dominant, you know, kickboxing champion or like a Bo Nickel, you know, dominant, you know, wrestler to just get a straight contract. I think actually he was on the Contender Series. I can't remember, but now I kind of think he was. Yes, I I think that even twice he was. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I have a last question uh, for you. If you, it's outside of fighting, but if you would have an unlimited amount of money in, and you could create any kind of business, so so you are not really thinking about money be because you have it. What kind of business would you like to to create and build? Uh, honestly, just a gym for me and all my you know all my teammates and training partners and friends to go in and train at. Um, it would just be a mega facility. Honestly, we'd have everything that you would have, you know, in a standard MMA gym, you know, ring, maybe a cage, um, some padded walls, padded floors, showers, sauna, but then, you know, the whole nine yards, if we're talking all the dollars, we're talking saunas, we're talking, um, ice plunges, you know, round the clock masseuses. Oh, that'd be nice. You know, like a juice bar, maybe like, uh, you know, Like a, you know, something like that. Maybe like a, you know, some guy that makes deli sandwiches. That would be ideal for me. Uh, that would be, that would be real nice. I like, like I said earlier, I mean, all I do is really train. Um, I train twice a day. Uh, that's basically all I do. Um, I, I play video games and I read, I watch TV um, occasionally. I see, you know, friends, you know, on the weekend, maybe, you know, potentially once a week. But, you know, I like to get it in there. But my main thing is training.
I push everything else out of the way for training, unless it's direly necessary or, you know, a direct family member in need, I am going to be at the gym. I am sorry. So that this kind of super gym would be really like helpful. Yes. I would probably just live there. It would just be my house. Uh, okay, Ethan. So uh, many f- f- thanks uh, for, for the conversation and good luck in, in your fight. Right. Uh, and I think that, that after this, this fight, you, 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 you will get a b- better opponent and the, the level of competition will grow. And, and because of that, you will also grow as, as the fighter. Yes, yes, that is that is the ultimate goal to keep uh, keep climbing the mountain, as they say, or as Michael Chandler says, see at the top.